welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you our homeschool routine. Let's get started. So I thought I'd go over what we do every week with you guys in case you're needing to kind of amp up your routine or not even amp up, but if you're needing to tweak your routine a little bit and um, just find the fit that works for you because we, we tend to get stuck in certain things. Oh, we need to be this regimented about this, that, and the other thing. And uh, oftentimes it actually ends up being a stumbling block for us, I found. So um, just kind of sit back, take a breath. If you're needing, obviously if you're walking this, you need help in this area. But um, just really taking the time to be flexible and realize that you, you know, you can fine tune this and you can make it what you need it to be. So I'm going to go over you. So I'm going to go over with you what we do every week. And it's pretty much the same routine every week. Um, on Thursdays, I sit down and I go through and make our lesson plans. And I will be making a video about how I do that um, coming up. But I write down our lesson plans for the week and um, just kind of keep each kid separate. I only have two kids, which makes it easier. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old who's still technically, he's in preschool because he's um, a December baby. So he won't start kindergarten until um, August here in California. But um, Monday through Friday, we always do what I call calendar. Um, this is kind of, it would be reminiscent to circle time, maybe even a little bit of morning time. If you're a homeschooler, you might be familiar with that term. But basically we go over our calendar. It's right here to my right. We go over the date, the day of the week. We go over the weather. We go over the season that we're in. And we also go over what day of school we're on. Right now we're on our 121st day as of today. Um, and, uh, just to kind of not only build routine, but especially with my younger child, get fluency as far as the days of the week, the month, uh, the seasons, familiarity with that, because that obviously that's something that every single human on the planet needs to know. Uh, so we do that. We also go through either a poem or a quote uh, for the month that has something to do with the month, especially if you have an early reader, definitely um, hone up on some rhyming stuff. That's why Dr. Seuss is so great for early readers. It just makes it a little bit easier. So kind of um, to get my little one, he's already reading, but to get him more fluent with reading, I incorporated a poem every day that we go over when we sit down to do calendar. Okay, and then after we do calendar, we actually do a read aloud. Right now we're reading uh, the second book in the Mysterious Benedict Society um, series. Highly recommend these books. They're a lot of fun. They're really, really compelling, even for me. I'm enjoying reading them. Uh, they're funny and just really engaging. But we do read aloud. We do it for a couple of different reasons. A, I want to instill a love of reading with my children. So we read a lot in my house. I'm a prolific reader, so it's important to me. Uh, B, it's important for them to get exposed to a lot of vocabulary. And one of the best ways to do that is to read aloud to your children. Having a strong vocabulary from a young age um, just, I mean, it puts you ahead of the game. It honestly does. And I'm going to link a book for you guys. This book right here in particular, I'm going to link it below for you. Highly recommend giving it a read through. Um, even if you don't homeschool, uh, it just shows the benefits of reading aloud to your children and they are many and vast and wonderful. And then lastly, I also found that starting, uh, with a read aloud kind of warms up their brains a little bit when it comes to actually sitting down and doing work. Beforehand, we started with math. I got a lot of resistance with that. And when I changed it, I noticed a big shift in attitude. They were much more apt and much more cooperative uh, in, in getting their work done. So um, don't be afraid to kind of tweak things and experiment a little bit. Uh, you don't have to like jump in and like, okay, we need to go hard at these books. I don't, you don't need to, that's the point. Uh, so if you're having a lot of resistance with your kids, I don't want to do this. Um, maybe look at switching things up and making things a little bit more, uh, enjoyable for them. And then when we do do read alouds, I always give them something to do with their hands. That just makes things easier, whether they're coloring or building with Legos, something to keep their hands occupied. Uh, you wouldn't think they would pay more attention 
but they pay so much more attention. Their little ears are open way more than if they were just sitting there doing nothing. Children need to move. They need to be doing stuff. And even when they're trying to pay attention to something you're saying. So if you're having trouble with that, try giving their little hands something to do. Um, I think you'll have a lot more success that way. Okay, after calendar and after read aloud, then we get into uh, the actual work work. Now, um, I'm going to go through really quickly just what we do throughout the week because it does change up uh, for each of the kids. So on Mondays, obviously we start with that same routine every day where we do calendar and we do reading. But then uh, for my second grader, we have math. He does his own silent reading every day. He works on his writing and his spelling. And then we do science. For my preschooler, he does his math, he does reading, he practices his writing skills, and we do science. You notice, obviously, he's not working on spelling. He's not working on uh, quite as much uh, as my older son. Tuesdays, it's pretty much the same in terms of math, reading, and writing for both of them. But for my second grader, we do language arts and social studies, and then we focus in on uh, geography. And then with my younger, obviously he's not doing language arts and social studies in such like concrete terms, but he does do geography with us. And that's basically our routine. We kind of switch off Monday, Wednesday with science and um, writing and spelling. And then Tuesday, Thursdays, we focus in on social studies and language arts. And then Friday, Friday's our fun day. Friday, we do tea time every Friday. We don't do any math. We don't do any social studies. We don't do anything like that. What we do is we get a snack. We make some tea or hot chocolate. If it's hot weather, we do iced tea or lemonade, something like that. And we will usually do some sort of craft or art project. Last week, we were studying um, Antarctica. So they made dioramas while we did tea. And I just spend uh, the time that we sit in school I just spend reading aloud to them. It sounds like it would be such a huge waste of time, but let me tell you, it changes the game. It, they look forward to story time so much. The vocabulary is getting built up. And this is how my five-year-old learned to read. He didn't learn to read from some sort of textbook or reading primer. He learned to read sitting on my lap being read to, which is extraordinary. I was honestly very worried about like, oh my gosh, because my oldest, he was in school, he was in preschool and kindergarten, he learned to read in school, a teacher taught him how to read. And he came to me already knowing how to read. Uh, so when we did homeschool, it wasn't as big of a concern. With O, when we started preschool in, when he was four, I'm like, I was really nervous about teaching him how to read. What if I'm teaching him the wrong way? What if I mess him up in some way? It just happened naturally for him. And I didn't have to do anything really. I just read to him and he would sit on my lap and I would like read with my fingers going and I did the voices. I made it interesting. I made it not boring and and not even always on my lap. Sometimes he's just sitting next to me and, and the words just somehow came into view. It was it was like magic. It was very it was very surprising in a wonderful, pleasant way. I'm so I'm honestly just very relieved that this isn't something that I have to really struggle with with him. He just kind of picked it up, which is really cool. But anyhow, <clears throat> you're bragging about my kid all day. But like as a side note, I don't want you to, um, I would gently <laughs> ask that you look into how best children learn, particularly when they're young and when I say that O is doing math and reading and writing, almost everything that he does is a play-based activity. And I cannot stress that enough. Uh, we don't do a lot of worksheets here. We don't do a lot of tests and, um, you know, five times each, five times each math pages and stuff like that. I don't do a lot of that in my homeschool. I try to do a lot of hands-on activities. I try to do a lot of manipulatives. I try to do a lot of experiments and stuff that gets them engaged. Um, a major study just came out of, I believe, Tennessee, where they were looking at Head Start programs where kids are at a very young age shoved into academics 
and worksheets uh, constantly and drills and stuff like that and come to find out, yeah, when they start kindergarten, they're ahead of their peers. By the time they're in third grade, they level off and then they start to decline and fall behind, which does not sound right. But we are finding just through reason, I shouldn't say we, scientists are finding and child development people are finding through research that the best way to give your child um, a good foundation is through play-based learning. Let them play, let them use their imaginations, let them interact with kids in play. And play is incredibly important to get them where they need to go. It just does something for their brains. And when you think about it, this is just how human beings learn. Um, most, even as adults, we are more likely to learn something through something that we find interesting and engaging, like a game or a puzzle or a teaser, than we are through some boring worksheet or a boring textbook. You know what I mean? So um, I, I definitely, I feel it important that you, if you are homeschooling, especially with younger kids, to look into that. We do Lego math, we do make-believe. When we are sitting down doing our read-alouds, they're playing. I have, a, I have a Rubik's Cube right here that they mess around with, you know what I mean? So um, you don't want it to be just, okay, we gotta hit the books, hit the books, hit the books. So um, now that that spiel is done, <laughs> um, I hope that this was a little bit insightful. Um, gave you a little bit of an idea of how to structure your day if you are struggling there. I hope it's an encouragement to you to tweak your routine. You are in charge, you make the, you make the day what it needs to be. And if you're having a hard time with it, don't be afraid to change it up and talk to your kids and ask them, hey, what did you like best in school today? Uh, what was your favorite thing about today? What was the favorite thing that you learned? and pay attention to them, what they're talking about and what they pick up on the most. Um, it tells you not only where their interests lie, but how they learn best. And, um, you know, some kids need to move around a lot when they're learning. Some kids need those, you know, those yoga balls or whatever. Some kids are visual learners. Some kids need you to move alongside them and guide them a little bit more. And when you are homeschooling, you have that luxury and you have the luxury to make it fun. Learning doesn't have to be a, a drag, you know what I mean? You can use manipulatives. You can go out and do an archeological dig in your backyard. You can go to the local museum. You can plan a lot of fun field trips. You can study the life cycle of frogs and then go to a pond. You can do a lot of stuff to enrich your children's lives in a wonderful way to make them lifelong learners and to make them um, honestly enjoy their schooling. So with that, I'm going to leave you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a little bit of a help. I will see you all next time. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And bye for now.